This video is going to give you all the basics about DNA. What DNA is, where it's found, what it looks like, its structure, and then a couple of functions right at the end. So let's start with what is DNA? If you look here, first of all, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And it's a molecule of genetic material found in cells and it's made up of nucleotides. Let's look at what a nucleotide looks like because that's a very, very important part of DNA. In that block, you can see the basic structure of a nucleotide. It consists of a phosphate, a sugar, which in the case of um, DNA is deoxyribose, and then you have a nitrogenous base. And those three components make up the nucleotide. And as we go along, you'll see how those nucleotides build to make the ladder that it makes up DNA. Let's now look at the location. Where do you find DNA? If you take a basic cell or basic eukaryotic cell like this one, you have a, a nucleus inside the cell and around the nucleus you have cytoplasm. Now you have a nuclear DNA which is inside the nucleus and then you have extra nuclear DNA and that extra actually means outside so it's outside the nucleus extra nuclear DNA which is um, a, lo a lot of it is found in mitochondria especially and that, let me call it mitochondrial DNA and mitochondrial DNA you will hear about on and off in grade 12. Now the structure of DNA, think of a ladder when you think of DNA. It's a ladder, but that ladder is made up of components. And let's look now. Remember the nucleotide that I told you about just now. You have two nucleotides next to each other, but they are attached with weak hydrogen bonds. If you look at the green, the two nitrogenous bases are attached with, to each other with weak hydrogen bonds and they hold the nucleotides together. If you look at the diagram, look over here, you see the sugar, the deoxyribose is in the middle and you have the nuclear, um, the nitrogenous base on the one side and you have the phosphate on the other side of each nucleotide. Now look at this diagram, I've put the little block at the top so that you can actually see um, and, and remember what I've just shown you. But now what you have, if you think of a ladder, the sugar and the phosphate part forms the sides of the ladder. We speak about a, 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 a phosphate sugar um, or phosphate deoxyribose backbone. So each side or each long part of the ladder is um, formed by the phosphate and deoxyribose. And then the rungs of the ladder, this part that you would step on if you were actually climbing that ladder, the rungs, each rung, consists of two nitrogenous bases coming together. And remember, it's a weak hydrogen bond holding that thing together. And that's how the ladder is formed. The nitrogenous bases are, um, there are four of them. And this is quite important to remember. It's essential that you remember this. So I'm going to try and help you now. You get guanine and, and adenine. They are known as purines, and then you get cytosine and thymine, and they're known as pyrimidines. And you'll see next to each word there, guanine, you write, you abbreviate it with a, a, a capital letter G, and adenine with a capital letter A, and you can use those letters when you are talking about these. But it's always a good idea to first write out the word, guanine, in brackets with a capital G, and then the rest of your discussion, you can just use the capital letter G. It's so that your marker or your teacher knows that you are, um, you know what you're talking about and you know about guanine and cytosine and these big words. It's not that important that you know that it's a purine or a pyrimidine. It's more important that you know the four bases and that you know how they pair up because they always pair up in the same way. You always have adenine with thymine and cytosine with guanine. It can be guanine and cytosine and thymine and adenine, it doesn't matter, but it's always adenine and thymine and cytosine and guanine. And we call that complementary base pairing. Now, complementary base pairing is a nice little phrase to remember. It kind of says a lot and it's quite fancy, but use it. It's, it's something worth learning because it helps you in discussions. 
And now I'm going to give you a way to remember these two, how they pair up. Adenine and thymine, they're always together. They lack a chomis, you know that? And um, guanine and cytosine, they're good companions. They want to be they want to spend time with each other. So that's a way to remember. A and T always together. Um, G and C, good companions. The last thing we're going to look at is the function of DNA. And this is the last slide. The two things that it's sort of you're going to be dealing with this in your um, syllabus and in the curriculum in matric. It's, um, the first thing is that DNA codes for the forma formation of different proteins. And when you do photo and protein synthesis, you're going to learn a lot about how DNA codes. So that's the one section that's going to take up quite a bit of quite a few weeks in your classroom. And then another thing, number two there, it carries hereditary information, which is passed on to offspring. And that you learnt about maybe in um, grade 8 or grade 9 you, and grade 10, you learnt about how DNA passes on genetic information. But now you're going to learn about genetics, which is going to take quite a few weeks. You're going to learn about meiosis, which is also a big part of the syllabus. So you can see these two um, functions form the, the basis of a lot of work that you're going to still do in, in grade 12, or maybe you've already done it. So I hope it's helped you. These are very important um, bits of information that I've given you. And um, if you go and look at the CAPS document, you'll see this is what you need to know.